What is the secret to unlocking your full potential? What makes your idols any different than you? How do you become the person you've always wanted to be in life? This is where you get all of your questions answered. My name is Justin Shank, and I sit down with some of the most epic individuals who are changing the world with their actions in business and in life. We discuss how they did it, why they pushed themselves, and more importantly, how they were able to focus on continuous growth to achieve their dreams. Welcome to the Growth Now Movement. This week, I sit down with Ken Jocelyn. Ken is the owner of the Ken Jocelyn Group, a 10x coach, Grant Cardone licensee, and real estate professional. Ken is a driven leader who has sold hundreds of millions in real estate and mortgages, planted multiple churches, and mentored hundreds. He's passionate about business and changing lives. More than that, Ken is a generous husband, father, and friend. In this episode, we talk about so much. We talk about relationship building. We talk about business. We talk about so many great things, how to keep your energy up, how to surround yourself with the right people, and how to grow anything it is that you're working on right now. You see, Ken has grown churches all across the country, uh, and he has also now uh, grown his business over 600% in one year. So we dive into all that stuff. We give you actionable tips, uh, and Ken's energy is through the roof. I think you guys are absolutely going to love this conversation. Now, before we get to the episode, I want to remind you guys that the Growth Now Summit is coming up February 18th and 19th. It is totally virtual and totally free. All you have to do is go to growthnowsummit.com and register so you can start to grow in all areas of your life. We're going to be talking about business and finances, wellness. We're going to talk spirituality, and we're going to talk about relationships and how you're able to maximize all of those things to live the life that you truly desire. Again, that is growthnowsummit.com. It is completely free, and I can't wait to see you guys there. Now, without further ado, let's get to the episode with Ken Jocelyn. Ken, welcome to the show, man. What's up, Justin? How you doing, my friend? You know, it's funny. I was like, at first, I was like, I'm going to try and match his energy. And I just, I just don't think it's possible. Uh, but I'm excited about the conversation. We had connected from, was it Brian Bogert? Brian Bogert connected. Yeah, Brian and Anthony things. Trucks. Yeah. Dude, and these guys are, are world-class connectors. And whenever they say, hey, you need to know this person, I'm like, yes, I'm all in. And so here we are chatting, man. And we're going to be doing some things in the future together, which I'm excited about. But why don't we start with who's Ken today? And then we're going to break down how you got there because it's an intriguing arc of where you came from and where you yeah. are now. So I want to get that yeah. out of it. Yeah, it's insane. Um, so who is Ken today? Out of the past 25 years, I spent half of that in full-time vocational ministry, um, pastoring, planting churches, and then the other half of that in full-time real estate as a mortgage broker, top mortgage broker in Georgia from about 01 to 09. Um, finished um, number one wholesale broker for Countrywide and SunTrust three years in a row. Back out of that, back into the church planning world in 2009 to about 2016. Um, pastor and planted church. And then back out of that, transitioned back into real estate. Um, last year, I finished seventh out of 3,725 agents in the fastest growing real estate company in the state of Georgia. Wow. Um, did uh, right at $8 million in volume. And so that's, that's where we get up to about probably 12 months ago. Yeah. And then, and then your whole world got rocked, man. And, and, you know, it's yeah. crazy. I mean, we had talked before and you grew your business 600% in the last calendar year, and we're going to get into all that stuff, man. And now you're building a brand and you're doing all these other things. But let's talk about that shift in your life. Like, first of all, that's a crazy jump going from ministry to real estate, to real estate, to ministry. Let's talk, let's, let's dive into that really quick. Where, what brought you into ministry? And then at the end, what shifted you back into real estate? What was the, the thought? Yeah, so I did. So I did ministry um, in, um, in 93, gave my life to Christ, about 96, 97. Just really kind of felt a call or a pull towards, I loved young people. I was at the time, I was probably 26, 27 years old. Um, started in, you know, in Georgia, it's the Bible Belt. Started a little Sunday school class, grew it from, I don't know, half a dozen kids, about 30 or 40 kids blowing out a room. Um, I just connected with kids because I am a kid, right? I'm 52 and I like I'm 12 about half the time. <laughs> I'm just connected. And it was just I just had a blast really helping teenagers with some of the things I didn't have. Grew up in a single parent home. Parents got divorced when I was eight. Went to 12 schools in 12 years. Moved from Pontiac, Michigan to Georgia uh, six different times from my sixth grade year to my senior year of high school. Six different high schools. I'm real transient. 
And so I just really had a heart and passion to help to help students. And so that's kind of that was that journey um, that went into um, I traveled with a friend of mine who played professional basketball. We did motivational high school assemblies around the country, spoke to about three hundred and twenty five thousand kids wow. in 2000 um, with a wife and two young children. Um, I couldn't do that anymore. So I called a buddy of mine, my best friend who owned a mortgage company in North Georgia, just outside of Atlanta. I said, hey, Chris, I need a job. He handed me keys to a. I don't know, it's probably a 95 or 96 Lexus LS 400. And he said, there's your office, here's your car. I made $146,000 my first year. I didn't know anything about mortgages. I just knew people. Yeah. And uh, so started the mortgage business a couple years later, got my broker's license and, and took off from there, man. That's awesome. And then obviously, you know, we, we briefly touched on the fact that you've grown your business an insane amount in the, the, the last calendar year. And obviously people think, you know, there's real estate agents everywhere. Actually, where I live, I live in Berks County, Pennsylvania. And I had lunch one day with a realtor about a year and a half, two years ago. And he goes, currently there are more realtors and houses for sale in our, in right. our county. And right. I was like, holy crap, they talk about a flooded market. But when you talk about growth and what you're doing to grow your business and grow you know, your companies and everything, you know, around that, what was the shift in your life where you went from, I'm a real estate agent to, no, I'm a freaking entrepreneur and I'm going to make this yeah. thing next level. Well, you know, in the, in the mortgage business, um, I just, I never, I, I grew a youth ministry from no kids to about 300 to 350 a week. One of the top, I was commu top communicators in the country. I was speaking on stages all across the, all across the nation um, with some really, really special people who mentored and poured into me. So I just, I've always had this sky is the limit mentality. Um, so the mortgage business was easy. Church, you know, ministry, it's, ministry is hard because you have to deal with people. I tell people all the time, ministry would be easy if it weren't for people, <laughs> but that's the people <laughs> we have to, that's the people we have to, we have to work with. No. Um, but business is, business is a little bit easier, but I just, I've, I've just always had this, Hey, this, this, I want to do something large. My statement for a long time was it's big. Like, and that came from youth ministry. Like, well, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it with excellence. And I'm going to do that at a high level. And so um, when I got back in the real estate business in 2016, it, it wasn't any different. And so I got back in the real estate business, you know, and, and when I say we grew over 600%, I was making 10 to $12,000 a month anyway. I mean, it's not like I was making 50 bucks a month. 600% from $50 a month is not that big of a deal. But, you know, we were making 10 to 12, I was making 10 to $12,000. I was working 10 to 15 hours a week. I was bored. I really had no pap, no purpose, no business. I'm like, what am I doing? You right. know, I wasn't in ministry anymore. Like that call and that drive just wasn't there. I went through the housing crash in 08, 09, because I was a mortgage broker then. That was a very difficult, obviously, you know, the majority of mortgage brokers then went out of business because the housing market crashed. Um, I just had no purpose and passion. Ran into a guy named Grant Cardone, um, if y'all know who he is. Um, and dude, within about within a span of about sixty days, went from not knowing who he was to being at a boot camp to meeting him one on one to becoming a Cardone licensee to the last two months of last year, um, closing about three and a half four million dollars. I made one hundred and twenty nine grand the last two months of the year. Um, became a Cardone licensee. Literally, this is what I told Grant. We were down in uh, we were down in uh, Miami, December the the ninth of twenty nineteen. And he had invited about a handful of mentor, people that were in the mentor program, about 1,600, 1,700 of us. And it was about 10 of us that got invited. And he asked me about my story because then I had already, in two months, literally my business had taken off. And I told him this. I said, Grant, I said, the best way I can tell you, he calls me preacher. He goes, hey, preacher. That's what he calls me all the time, right? <laughs> he says, By I the said, way, the best. Just close your eyes. People listening, close your eyes. That sounds exactly <laughs> like him. He goes, I he love goes it. hey, preacher. Yeah, I know. He goes, <laughs> he goes um, I told him, I said, Grant, the best way. We're sitting in like a horseshoe shape and Grant's in his director's chair, right? We're at 10X headquarters. And they had me share my whole story in front of all 160, 70 salespeople, the whole, the whole 10X headquarters. So now we're one-on-one -on -one time with Grant and I said, and he had me share my story again in front of everybody. And I said, Grant, the best thing I can tell you is when I came to boot camp in October, the businessman on the inside of me got born again, mm. bro. Uncle G jumped up out of his chair. He was so fired up. He was like, Oh my God, do y'all hear the passion coming out of this guy? This guy's so on fire. Oh, you know. And so literally that's what happened, dude. I went to 10 X boot camp. I'm like, where has this been? I'm looking at this crazy five foot five guy who's worth, a gazillion dollars. And, and, and I've, and what's happened over the past year um, is I've gotten an opportunity to be with Grant several times behind the curtain, like not in the audience, but just him and I one-on-one. And he really does have a heart and passion to help people. And so 
So, dude, I took that. I, we had a one-on-one -on -one conversation, impromptu meeting that weekend in a hallway, spent five minutes with me. Ken, what's your, what, what are you here for? I said, I want to blow the lid off my mindset of what's a lot of money. And I want to, and I want to, I want to, I want to duplicate and scale my real estate team. I went home, dude, blew it up in two months. Um, now we've got agents in Birmingham, Alabama, Atlanta, Georgia. We do commercial and residential um, real estate. That business has grown up. We became a Cardone licensee. I'm one of Grant's top licensees. I have access to Grant, Jared, the whole team down at 10X, which has been phenomenal. Um, and then started the Grow Stack Drive movement, which is the brand that we do, which is our one-on-one -on -one coaching, our online coaching, our online courses, um, our podcast, our virtual summit that we do. Dude, it's been an unbelievable ride. Um, our motto on our teams is we jumped off a cliff and we're building an airplane on the way down. <laughs> Dude, I love it. Because like, honestly, when people think about this, like we're talking about a, a calendar year, um, you know, 13 months actually. So, so when, when we look at that, like that's stuff that people build over the course of a decade. Right. Like I look at what I've done. I started a podcast. Now I do live events and, and it, I could make it sound like it's a year, but it was four and a half years of like grinding and, and doing all these things. And, and that's what you know, led to the coaching. And you're putting all this together in a year because of a moment, because of mm -hmm. a choice in your life. where You're like, mm -hmm. I got to go this way or I go this way. Like mm -hmm. you didn't say it here, but I know the story. You, you saw an ad from Grant Cardone, which most never heard of just, it before. Yeah. We just scroll never heard past, of before. right? Yep. Um, which is which is unbelievable because you're you were in the real estate game for so long, but you go mm -hmm. you scroll past. Uh, most people scroll past, but you clicked and then you committed and you went all in. A lot of people buy into these things, and I'm sure you see it being a part of it. Yep. A lot of people buy yep. into these things and they make no change and they don't do anything different. What is it about you, or what are the things that you did that were different than the thousand other people who bought in that did nothing? I've been really fortunate over the past 25 years. Again, I was one of the top guys in youth ministry um, from 96 to about 2001. And the reason I was, because I had um, two or three mentors who were the top of the top of the top um, in, in the youth ministry. Parachurch, one of the top youth pastors in the country. She had 1,200 students in her youth ministry. Most churches don't ever get 1,000. She had 1,200 in her youth ministry. I had, I had people who recognized something in me, who spoke into my life and mentored me. Um, from that into the mortgage business, my best friend was one of the top mortgage brokers in the state of Georgia. I learned from him. I quickly went from not knowing what a 1008, 1003 RESPA or TIL was, which are all mortgage documents, by the way, to being, being his number one guy. Two, I did that a couple of years till I had everything under my belt, started my own mortgage business, um, had 14 loan officers, two different locations in the state of Georgia, one of the top wholesale brokers for Sun, SunTrust and Countrywide. Again, I had the top people when I went back into full-time ministry and planted the church. I had some of the top pastors and the top leaders in America helping me do what I did. So when I came out of that season and went into the real estate, what did I do? I said, now I'm smart enough to know who's the top guys in real estate. I want to learn from the top people. And that's what I did. And then I, I stumbled across this little five foot five fireball named Grant Cardone and, and, and got connected with Grant. And I, I write in my book, and I know this is your video and some of this, I write in my, my 10X journal every day. One of my quote every single day is get in rooms with people who think bigger than you do. From my officiating career, I referee, I, not so much now, but I refereed college basketball for a long time on the women's side, umpire college baseball still. Um, dude, my mentors on the, on the women's college basketball side are some of the best officials on the women's side. They've worked probably a combined 20 national championships and final wow. fours. On the baseball side, one of my best friends worked hundreds of, of big league games. You know, some of my other best friends are, are minor league evaluators that I work college games with. I mean, I just get around the people who are the best at the best. And let me tell you something, it shortcuts and circumvents the process and the time that you have to have. You said it just a minute ago, took me four and a half years. I have been super fortunate and give all the credit to the amazing people that I've been around for us to be where we are today. Yeah, I love it. And so I want to go deeper into that. I talk a lot about relationship building on this show because it's something that I've done and, and I give a lot of credit to these individuals behind me on the wall and so many other ones. I mean, 350 plus interviews, you know what I mean? And th including this one here. And, you know, what, what is it about building these relationships? How are you able to go about building these relationships with the people that are top in the world? When most people look at it and they go, oh, they seem untouchable. They seem like I can't even get in their space. Like, what is it about your approach or your thought process that makes it easy for you? Well, I, I've learned over a period of time, they put their pants on just like I do. And, the, and I, I call it a, I, Justin, I call it a DNA thing. Like when you and I connected with Anthony Trucks, 
who's a dear friend of mine. I do. I think this, he's one of my favorite people in the world. When Anthony connected me with Brian Bogart, Brian and I connected, Brian actually came out to my live boot camp in Nashville, just called me on the phone because of who I had to do. He said, man, you've got Anthony trucks there, Carlos Reyes there, coach Michael Burton. I said, dude, come on, come hang out with us. Like, and it wasn't something where, and this is, Coach Burke says this a lot, I, I was interested before I was interesting. Mm. Like, how can I walk into the relationship? I say this to people all the time. Are you a thermometer or are you a thermostat? When you walk into a room of people, do people gravitate towards you or away from you? Thermostats walk in the room and they just gauge the temperature of the room. The, I mean, thermo, thermometer do that. Thermostats, they walk in the room, they have the ability to be able to change the culture and the climate of a room. When you walk into a room, passionate leaders are intentional in adding value to people. When you meet with people, dude, add value. How can I add value and how can I not tell you what I'm doing, but how can I take a Justin Schenck or a Grant Cardone or a Jared Glant or a David Meltzer or a Greg Reed or a Sharon Lecter? Dude, I can go on and on and on with all the names that I've met over the past year. How can I add value and help? How can I, Zig Ziglar, if I help enough people get what they want, eventually I'm going to get what I want. How can I help people? And if I, and, and the ministry mindset and the ministry heart hasn't changed. It's the same. How can I help people win? And when I help them win, dude, I'm going to win. It, it, it literally is. You can call it karma. You can call it Galatians chapter six. I'm going to reap what I sow. I, I, if I help people, people are always, always, always in turn going to help me. Yeah, dude, I love it. And so why go on? Obviously, you're having this great success in real estate is growing. It's growing gangbusters still to this day. Why start the consulting? Why start the coaching? Why start these other things that you began to do? Um, was it is it kind of the ministry passion being drawn just in a different way or? Yeah, so it's so the reason I scaled my ministry, reason I scaled my real estate team was to be able to give friends and people that I've had relationship with who have never made six figures in their life. They're making 60, 70 grand working 50, 60 hours a week. And I'm like, man, I can teach you how to do real estate. You can make that and work 20 or 30 hours a week. So that's really even how I, I got the idea to scale my real estate team was that. And so on the coaching side, I, we just we just left um, we just left Nate and I, who worked for John Maxwell for years. We met 20 years ago. He's my business development guy. He helped John um, build and sell Maximum Impact. Enjoy. He worked for Kim Blanchard, Marcus Buckingham, Jordan Rubin, all these guys. Nate and I have been friends for 20 years. I met him. He was emceeing for John on a stage 20 years ago. Walked mm. up to him afterwards, found out we lived 10 minutes together, and do we've been friends for 20 years. We were on the way home from Jacksonville doing a one-on-one um, with, with a client um, last, last week, Tuesday, Wednesday. And he goes, he goes, man, what's your why? He goes, why are, why are we doing what we're doing? I said, dude, I want to, I, I love people. I want to help people win. I want to help people win. So why am I doing my one-on-one coaching? In our group? Dude, I want to help people win. I just had a girl on my podcast just a while ago, Melissa Stewart from Illinois, who saw me on a, on a live on Instagram with Grant Cardone. It was like right in the middle of COVID. And I tell Grant, I'm like, bro, I have to put, if you go live and I watch, I have to put a shirt on if I'm working out because he'll pull my ass in there. And I'm like sweating. And I, in this one, I was on the treadmill. I'm pouring sweat. And Grant's like, what's up, preacher? How's it going, man? What's going on? And I'm like, you know, we're going back and forth. And she sees this live. And she's like, oh my God, who is this guy? This guy's got crazy energy. She DMs me. I DM her back. We start a, a conversation. That was like March, second, third week in March. She's got a salon shut down for 10 weeks. She wanted to be a coach, no clients, and she had a cleaning business. It was her and one other girl. Dude, now she on her thing today. She, she cleared six figures for the first time ever with her salon being down for 10 weeks. She just, she's doubled, tr- actually tripled the size of her salon. She's got six people working for a cleaning business. She picked up 28 homes in the month of October. And now she's wow. coaching seven people on a, on a, she has seven paid coaching clients right now. Dude, it's into get in rooms with people who think bigger than you do. Yeah, dude. And I love the fact that she just reached out. It's amazing how many people listen to these things, watch these, you know, they, they absorb all the content, but they don't ever cross the bridge of connecting and reaching out and seeing what happens. Yeah, there's a lot of a-holes out there that won't reply, but there's also yes. a lot of people from my own experience. If you look at the list of people I've had on the podcast, when you reach out, they they message back and you can build a strong relationship by again, approaching these individuals by giving, 
What can I bring to your life to help you to support right. you? And then in turn, this woman's coming to you and saying, I need you to help me and support me because she saw you sweating on a treadmill or on, an, <laughs> on a Facebook live or whatever. Like that's crazy, right? <laughs> on the Instagram live with Grant, right? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's unbelievable how quickly things can shift in your life if you say yes to those things, right? Now, it, everything seems awesome, right? You grew your, your business 600% because you made a connection. But what is it really? What are the things that you have instilled into your life beyond the relationship building? What are the routine, routines? What are the tactics? that you're doing to really uh, you know, build that life that you truly desire? We have five core values throughout my companies and through, throughout GrowStack Drive. We call them our GrowStack Drive, um, our GSD code filters. They're passion, focus, intentionality, teachability, and flexibility. So passion is how I attack my day. It's how I go after my goals. I write my goals down twice a day. That, that's something that Uncle G taught me that I, even Melissa today on my podcast, she's like, dude, I write my goals down twice a day. It's insane what I believe is possible today. So passion, and I've never been accused of having a lack of passion, but passion is how I attack my goals. It's how I go after what I'm writing down every day. Focus is how I, is how I dominate my calendar. I say this all the time, and you know this, if I spend money, I can go make more money. But when I spend my time, Justin, it's gone forever. I better right. steward my time well. The third thing is intentionality. What do I say to people? How do I speak to people? Our real estate agents, one of the things that, that they learn from me probably more than anything else is the intentionality in what I say to people. Dude, they'll, be, they'll get ready to send a text to a client and they'll send it to me to prove first. Hey, let's mm -hmm. change it from this to this. And super intentional in what we say. Teachability, that's the fourth one. I, and, and, our, and our thing on teachability is I'm not only open to feedback, but I actively pursue feedback. Who in my area, whether it be a real estate agent, whether it be a communicator, whether it be a coach, and this is it, who in my area is, is further down the road than me and what do I need to do to add value to what they're doing and build a relationship with them, which is going to speed up the process for me. And then the last one is flexibility. If we haven't learned flexibility in 2020, we live in a fluid world, so we better be fluid. You better be able to move and shift and, and pivot. So those are our five core values. Um, so that, that's really, those are the things that drive us. Our team, dude, we, I, had, I was on a Zoom call this morning. I've got team from San Diego all the way over to Atlanta. Um, we're on a call today and we're talking about one of those core values. Today, it was, it was intentionality. Okay, guys, we're finished fierce. The rest of the month at Gross Tech Drive is finished fierce. Leaders finish fierce. When they see the finish line, they don't let up, they speed up. So let's be intentional in using that language, finish fierce in our social media posts, in the way that we talk, in the conversations we have. So, so really, that that's been the, that's been the key is those is core values and creating healthy culture inside of our organization. No, I love it. And I love the idea, this idea of finish fierce. And I know you're going a little bit deeper with one of your, you do virtual summits once a month, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. We do them once a month, third Tuesday of every month at noon Eastern time. Awesome. And this one is about finish fierce. And obviously you have a, a crazy mm -hmm. lineup. And I think this, this episode I th might come out. When's it, is it next Thursday you're doing it? It's the 15th, December the 15th, Tuesday. Okay. It's the third so, Tuesday of every month. Okay. So actually, if you're, if you're listening to this right now, it releases on that day. So if you listen to this in the morning, you can go check this out. Um, but, but talk a little bit about how you came up with this idea of you know, power, power launches, right? Where you bring in the yeah. top people to talk about whatever in 10 minute increments. I love the idea. Tell me, tell me a little bit about it and what's the thinking behind it. So, so in ministry, they did a thing called the nines and it was, they'd have a bunch of pastors for all day long and we would do nine minute segments, just quick, just points. So our, our theme this month for Gross Tag Drive is finish fierce. When leaders see the finish line, they don't let up, they speed up. So what I did, I've got Coach Michael Burt, Emily Missler, Carlos Reyes, Anthony Trucks, David Meltzer, Jared Glant, Jeff Finster, and Nate, um, who I mentioned just a minute ago. So I've got all these. Dude, these are, that's probably a half a billion dollars or more in the room right there. It's insane. And so I'm like, guys, we've got, you've got 10 minutes to bring me one or two principles on finishing fierce. And then we do five minutes of Q&A. And so last year when COVID hit, you know, we were, Gross Day Drive was just an event we were going to do May the 15th. And guys, Sharon Lecter said this, you know, Sharon, I've got her book right here, Outwinning the Devil. Um, she wrote Three Feet from Gold with Greg Reed, who's a dear friend of mine. Um, she also helped write um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad series with Robert Kiyosaki. She's fun, a phenomenal woman. I was with her, Tim Story, and Coach Bird at Coaches a couple, two or three months ago. And she said something. She goes, you don't need motion. You don't need magic. You need motion. And I was hmm. like, oh, my gosh. Like, 
like floored me. And, and I'm going to take action. And Grant talked about action, 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 action. But you don't need magic. You need motion. When you start something, just start. Don't wait for the perfect moment to start. Just get going. Just get motion. And I'm telling you, when you take action, momentum comes from action. We started Grow Stack Drive. We were going to do a live event in Atlanta. David Pollock on ESPN's College Game Day. David's a really good friend of mine. He was speaking. Richie Dolan from 10X Headquarters was speaking. We were doing it at the Maxwell Leadership Institute in Atlanta. It was going to be a two-day event. It's going to be phenomenal. First live event. COVID. Eh. Scratch. Yeah. We were going to launch our we were going to launch our coaching program on that on that weekend at the leadership. Where can you where are you going to do a conference better than the Maxwell Leadership Institute in Atlanta? Come on, man! Yeah, right? Like that's the that's the place, right? COVID hits, no conf, no. I mean, we're not doing a conference, coaching things out. I'm like, well, let's do an Instagram live every day. So I hopped on. I started doing Instagram lives. I got Grant to commit. I got Jared to commit. Brandon Dawson to commit. Elena Cardone. Elena committed. So now I'm now I've got some names, right? So I start reaching out to people that I really did may have relationships with those guys. I reach out and people start coming on. And some, I mean, some big name people keep coming on. And then I'm like, what, what would it look like for us to bring six, seven, eight of these guys together and do a virtual summit? And so I did my first virtual summit, I think in March or either April of last year. And we did that one was in the evening since we transitioned it in to be like a lunch and learn for business owners. Um, I, I did it. I did it in the evening. That was a Tuesday. And this is this is how I realized the power of that, Justin. I got off. We did that call that night. The next day, Richie Dolan, who runs up the he, Richie heads up the Cardinal Licensee Program for Grant. Uh, Richie is the life coach for Mike Tyson. He just trained Mike for this fight. He's the wow. coach for the LA Lakers. He's LeBron's life coach. Um, when I first heard Richie speak at 10X headquarters about the licensee program, I'm like, dude, this guy's really sharp. Who is this guy? I start thumbing through Instagram, looking up Richard Dolan, and it's him and Michelle Obama on stage. It's him and Barack Obama on stage. It's him and Bill Clinton. It's him and George Bush. It's him and Oprah. It's him and Ellen. It's him and Kobe Bryant. It's him and LeBron. I'm like, oh my God, where did this guy come from? Like That's when I bought into the whole Cardinal licensee concept. I was like, if this guy's doing this, and then he shows his two NBA championship rings. So so I'm, I'm connected and, and I'm listening to Richie do this thing. And so I kind of, we kind of get bought into um, this whole this whole thing about Cardinal licensee. So the next day I hop on a call that Richie's doing after our virtual summit. I'm about 10 minutes late getting on the call. And Richie's teaching. He's a phenomenal community. He speaks for Tony Robbins all the time. Richie stops the, he stops his Zoom call and he goes, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a celebrity in the room. And I'm like, well, dang, who is that? Like, dude, he's had Dwight Howard on, Tyson was on one of our calls, Larry King Live was on one of our, I'm like, dude, who we got on today? That's awesome. And he goes, hey guys, ladies and gentlemen, Ken Jocelyn is in the room. I'm like, there's two or 300 people in the room. And I'm like, who's Ken Jocelyn? Oh, that's me, right? <laughs> and he goes, and he, he just gives me a hand clip. He goes, I want you to know this morning, he goes, I was on a 30 minute call with Grant, Elena, um, Jared, and Sherry Hamilton, who's the who runs this kind of CEO for Grant. And he goes, Grant talked about you for almost 15 minutes this morning and the difference you've made. Yeah, I did. I made the same face you just did. Wow. Um, that's when I realized, wow, we're, we're doing something really cool here and really special here. If Grant and Jared and those guys are taking notice and they're spending that much time talking about what we're doing, we're doing something really special. So that's when I knew, oh, okay. This is we've we've hit a vein, and it's just it's just building relationships and helping people, man. Dude, I love it, man. You know the the cool part about this podcast, and as you know, hosting your own podcast now, it's really cool to sit down and have you know thirty five, forty five minute conversations with some of the most successful people in the world. However, you want to define success. So, my question for you is: What is your definition of success, and what are three things you do every day to ensure that success for yourself? So I sat down. Um, I told you earlier, I grew a youth ministry from five kids to three to 350 a week on average in the church about six, 700 people. Like nobody was doing what we were doing. This was like in 99. Yeah. Right. And I, I was at a, I was at an event in Michigan, Pontiac um, Silverdome. So 74,000 people, the leadership part of that was, um, I don't know, 10, 12,000 people. And I'm speaking between two of like my heroes of the faith. Right. And one of those, the next day, takes me to lunch. She looks across the table and she says, Ken, would you rather be successful or significant? She goes, because they're vastly different. And I'm a 30-year-old wow. kid who thought, man, I'm the guy, right? Like I'm in front of all these people. I'm on these big stages. I'm traveling. I'm doing leadership development. 
And she said, Ken, would you rather be successful or significant? Because they're, they're two totally different things. And that's really where I grasped the idea of significance. And significance says, I want to take other people along the journey with me. It's not about me. Like I have a, I have a responsibility, not just a calling, but a responsibility to help other people win. Mm-hmm. And I say this all the time. Like one of our, one of our online courses, we, we talk about championing cultures of leadership. John Maxwell talks about it. Zig Ziglar talks about it. I mean, the, the best of the best, right? And what we talk about is, is success through significance. That if I start out to be significant, I will always be successful. But if I start out to be successful, I may or may not find significance. And I also may or may not leave a trail of damage behind me. Mm. Because when success is the bullseye for me, dude, it's so, because it really is about me and it's not about the team. My two favorite authors are Simon Sinek and Pat Lencioni. Two favorite by far. Pat Lencioni's got a podcast. I shared it last week on my Instagram. Ken Coleman, who runs the, the Entree Leadership Podcast for Dave Ramsey, he's a friend of mine. I yeah. met him. He worked at Maxwell's office with Nate. So I, we played poker together and golf together like 20 years ago, right? <laughs> I had Ken on my podcast a while back, and he did a, he did a podcast with Pat Lencioni, and he was talking about healthy leadership cultures and healthy organizations. You know, I listened to that podcast 150, 200 times. I just listened to it again the other day and posted it on my page. Like, th- those – the difference between success and significance is do I do, am I in this for other people or am I just in this for me? And so when you say success, it, it, when it translates into my heart, it comes out of significance. How can I be? And if I, if I go after significance, I will always find success. It, it can't escape you. Yeah. I love that dude. And it's wow. The framing of that is phenomenal. Uh, and you're hundred percent right. Like, you know, we can set all these lofty goals for ourselves, and whether it's cars, houses, money, whatever. But when you talk about significance and impact and, you know, helping people get what they want, you're going to be successful every single day. Like that's incredible. I love it. So what are three things you make sure you do every day to ensure that success every single day for yourself? Yeah. So I, my morning routine's pretty, you know, when I talked about the, the, when I talked about the core value of focus, um, what I teach my clients and I, I just was with two one-on-one clients, one in Jacksonville, one in Chicago, I actually flew down to Birmingham this weekend to spend three days with me. One of the things we talk about is calendar blocks. I have four colors on my calendar. I have a blue, which is my personal time. So as soon as I get up every morning, alarm set at five 30, I say this all the time. If you need an alarm clock to get out of bed, your goals aren't big enough. Hmm. Like, dude, I'm up usually 450 to 515, depending on how hard the F45 class was the day before <laughs> and how much rest I need, right? Um, so I've got blue on my calendar, and that's my all my personal development time. So as soon as I get up, I grab my phone. I go to YouVerse, and I do, I'm do. i doing some kind of scripture reading or some kind of Bible plan. I'm listening to a little worship music. Um, I get done, brush my teeth. My clothes for the gym are laid out on my chair. I dress. My pre-workout's ready in the refrigerator. I come into my podcast studio. I sit down. I write my goals down. I'm reading right now. I'm reading Outwitting the Devil from Sharon Lecter and Napoleon Hill. I'll read a chapter of my book. I'll do a little card on you. I'll listen to a podcast. I'll listen to myself on our on our, um, our online stuff. Um, so personal development time is huge. If I can't take care of me, I can't take care of anyone else. Hmm. There's a reason when you get on a plane and the stewardess says, in case of loss of cabin pressure, oxygen mask is going to drop down from above you. If you're with a child, take care of you first, then put the oxygen mask on the child. Because if something happens to that parent or that adult, that child's doomed. If you can't take care of you, nobody else in your organization has a chance. Or, or if you have great leaders in your organization, they're going to go to another organization and find another place to go to work because you can't take care of you. So blue, green on my calendar is where I make money. You better have, Coach Michael Burke calls it high value activity. You better have high value activity where you're making money for yourself. Yellow on my calendar is where I'm working on my business, not in my business. And then my red time is the time I spend with the people that I love. So I would say those are, that's probably number one is, is my, is my calendar and my routine. And I say this to a lot of people that I coach and teach group or one-on-one, Justin is, is don't be married to my process because my process may not work for you. You may be a, you may not be a morning person. You may be a night person. Whatever that looks like, find a rhythm for you that works for you. Dude, I love it, man. I love it. Like I, the, the, 
I feel like we could talk forever, right? Like there's so many different directions we can go. I mean, I, I try and keep these episodes at a certain time frame. Um, but so here's what I'm, I'm prefacing. You will be back on the show in the future. I appreciate uh, we're going to make sure we get there. Um, but is there anything else you want to touch on before I get to the final question? Is there anything burning from your heart right now that you feel people? Yeah, I would say, dude, we just finished up a 28 day incremental, not monumental challenge. There are people ask me all the time, Ken, have you done what you've done? And I mentioned this to you off air and I mentioned this to you a couple of weeks ago when we talked, there's two things. Number one is relationship. It's always, 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 always about relationship. Who's in your community? Who are you taking the journey with? That's what makes our grow stack drive community so unbelievable. Dude, we've listened. We've got 120 some odd people on our private Facebook page. We have 91% engagement. Wow. 109. That's insane, dude. That's insane. It's a dude. I got goosebumps. Look at that. It's insane. The involvement, the engagement we have 90.8% last week was our engagement because we're in a community of people who understand who's in my community, who's in my circle and who's in my corner. Like those three things, who's the group of people you're traveling with? Who's the smaller group of people that are holding you accountable? And dude, who's those one or two people that are in your corner that know everything about you? That's number one. Number two is, is the principle of incremental, not monumental. And that is me making small, daily, disciplined decisions over time. Incremental always turns into monumental results. I was on, I was on, uh, we were in our uh, mentorship with Grant probably two months ago. I was like 12, 1300 people on the call, right? So Grant gives us homework. He goes, I want you to go to five people and ask them to describe you in one sentence. So I kind of, I, I text Jared and Grant and I'm like, Hey, I got a question. So G goes, where's Ken at? Put, pull, somebody pull Ken up. Right. And him and Elaine are sitting side by side. And he goes, he goes, what you got preacher? And I said, I said, Hey G, this guy named Grant Cardone gave me some homework for the week. And he, I've got to ask five people to describe me in one. And he just started laughing. Right. And he's like, he'd been played. He knew he had. And I said, you and Elaine are sitting there side by side. I'd love for you to describe me. And this is exactly what he said. He thought for a minute, which is Grant's not, you know, he just shoots from the hip, right? He thought for just a second. He goes, Ken, every time I look up, you're always there. Every time I get on social media, you're always there. Every time I post or I'm alive, you're always there. Every time I look up, you're always there. That, that is the definition of incremental, not monumental. Relationships and incremental, not monumental, I'm telling you, will make a difference in your life. Dude, so, so key. Like, that's what I talk about all the time about, you know, focusing on growing 1% every single day, right? Like we don't have, we don't have to blow it out of the water overnight. My ultimate goal with my live events to fill an arena. But if that was my goal year one, I would have been frozen in fear, right? So if you can focus right. on those small steps, that's huge, man. I love it. So before I get to the final question, let's get to the important stuff. How do people get a hold of you? Where's the information? How do they sign up for that virtual summit if they're listening in the morning of the release yeah, of this? Yeah, uh, growstackdrive.com forward slash virtual summit. Growstackdrive.com forward slash virtual summit. Um, that's super easy. Um, and, and it's another one. So another thing I learned from Grant. Make it easy. It's grantcardone.com forward slash something. So it's grosstagdrive.com forward slash something. Um, on Instagram, it's just at Ken Jocelyn, K-E-N-J-O-S-L-I-N. Um, we would love to connect. Um, we're doing something right now in the month of December. Um, we've opened up. It's called Grow 30. So we're giving away. I say give away. You don't have to put a credit card in. Nobody's calling you to get a credit card. We literally want people to be exposed to our community. Um, so that's all of our online content that we have. Dude, we spent six figures doing this online content. It is six to eight weeks of crushing limiting beliefs like fear, scarcity, insecurity, um, comparison, fear, um, success. It's six to eight weeks on creating winning strategies, personally, professionally, and financially. And another course about six to eight weeks on championing culture's leadership free for the month of December. Our online coaching calls on Wednesday night free for the month of December. Our gross stat drive private Facebook page. I just told you we have over 90% engagement free for the month of December. Growstackdrive.com forward slash December. It's that simple. And nobody's taking a credit card. Nobody's asking you for anything. It's literally to just say, hey, guys, we're here. And we are a community of entrepreneurs from across the country. Some guys are working. Some guys don't even have a company yet. We've got guys that are making $10 million a year. It's, it's insane the, the, the variant, the variance or whatever the proper word is, um, the, the difference in the different levels of people that are in our community. It's unbelievable. I love it. Make sure you guys take advantage of that. Look, we get so many opportunities in life and it's about how we react to those opportunities. And here's one. 
So go check that out. Also follow him because January, I'm going to be a part of the virtual summit. Yes. So we can all play over there together in January as well, man. But Ken, like I said, I wrap up every single interview with this one question. Since the show is called The Growth Now Movement, the question is, in your life, what has been your biggest moment of growth? Ooh, had to be. It had to be. Um, I'll take it back to August the twenty second, nineteen ninety three, and so the day I gave my life to Christ, made a commitment. I didn't grow up in church, dude. Didn't know anything about Jesus, and and uh, to be honest with you, Jesus gets a pretty bad rap by what religion looks like around the world um, because he's not what's portrayed in a lot of ways. Um, I, I say this all the time that God loves you because you're a son or daughter, not because of what you do for Him. So there's not a spiritual checklist out there. Like if I go to church, he loves me. If I do this, he loves me. Oop, if I sin, he don't love me anymore. No, he loves you because he created you. Like, like that is that is who he is. Um, so that was probably the biggest growth, biggest growth moment of my life to understand that and really have that, um, that just kind of explode in my heart. I love it, man. Thank you so much for sharing that. Ken, thank you for coming on and lighting the world on fire, man. Thank you for what you're doing every single day to improve the world, the lives of so many people. I can't wait to see where you're going to be a year, two, three years from now, man. And I'm, I'm honored to know you and and call your friend, man. Thank you so much. Hey, when you fill that stadium, I'm going to be on the front row cheering you on, baby. I love it, man. Thank you guys so much for being a part of the Growth Now movement. This is how you can really help me out. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please share it out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that fun stuff. And let's grow this movement to epic heights. And it's all going to be because of you guys. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next week.